Hi, I'm over at Felixstowe. I have two days off and I have two days of bikepacking planned. So best way to spend days off, I'd say. So uh, I've got a ferry to catch at uh, from here to Harwich and then a 70 something mile route which Ross has put together for me. I'll probably show you that on the ferry because I'm cutting a bit fine. And I need to get down to the ferry as well. But it's a nice day. It's sort of, sun's trying to come out. It's nearly there. It's still freezing, obviously, because it's Britain and it's June, which is crazy. I can't believe it's June. I'm actually gonna be in Canada this month, June the 30th. Yes, I am nervous. Anyway, yeah, let's get going. I'll show you some of the sights on the way. Felixstowe so is actually a beautiful place. When I first moved here about 12 years ago, a friend of mine told me to come over for the day. And I thought, why? Why would you come over to just a oily, smelly old ferry port? Not ferry, cargo container port. But it's not that at all. I mean, there is the busiest port in Britain, I think, Felixstowe. So. But uh, the, the place itself is really nice. Tell they put a lot of effort into um, keeping it traditional but not corny like a lot of these places can be. Also, the port itself is fascinating. I'll try and get the drone up, maybe show you some of that. It's huge, and they have the you know the biggest of all the container ships. I think that, um, yeah, definitely. The you remember the one that broke the Suez Canal, blocked it for over a week. That one came straight from there to here, and I watched it come in ever new evergreen something like that yeah so they have the biggest of the big and i i think the biggest container ship of all time was here not not long ago i say think a lot don't i i'm just non-committal i'm pretty sure i'm right though so yeah that um one from the suez canal came straight here and uh i imagine the captain was taken off and flogged probably at langard fort which is where i'm heading is probably the designated flogging point for canal blocking captains. Don't have time for amusements. I wanted to go on that red truck. So disappointed. These are all defences for something. I used to know. It's terrifying that I forget. The fort, I can't even remember when that was made or... I've got a feeling it was Napoleonic, but don't quote me. Do you get to that age where you have to learn things three or four times? Made it safe and sound. This lock thing, I don't get it. I think it's supposed to be romantic, but it seems a bit sinister to me. Anything to do with relationships and locks. No. So it's windy, as you can probably tell. You might be able to hear it. I'm gonna stop, have a coffee, obviously and then have a look at my next landmark. There's plenty on this trip. 
and last time I rode past every single one of them, more or less. I'm not going to do that this time. I've got plenty of time today. I was going to tell you about the route. I'll get that out. Maybe I'll find somewhere a bit more sheltered first. So Langard Fort was originally built in 1540 and it's been changed and added to over the years. So here's the route and we're down here in Harwich and I'm going this way down to Walton on the Nays, Frinton, Clacton, Clacton, round near Brightling Sea, Wivenhoe, near to Colchester, Manning Tree and back to Harwich. Probably going to be about 40 miles today and then find a wood or somewhere to stealth camp and if I can't find anywhere I might just book a campsite. I don't mind doing that. At least you can have a shower and stuff like that and a fire. But it's about 70, actually I can tell you, 77.5 miles. So yeah, I'd have to do about 40 today. I've diverted from my route already. I was just speaking to a couple and they told me there's a Banksy picture up here somewhere. And having never seen one, I thought I'd have a look. seems I'm on the Essex Way, which is a way I have never heard of. All these footpaths I come across that I keep adding to my list. I do love to walk. I think hiking is my favourite thing. Biking is great. You get a lot of distance covered in a shorter time, obviously. But I think I am a hiker who also rides bikes. Not that that matters. I filmed the third one. I don't know how many more there are. So tempting. But I haven't come far enough. I don't deserve beer. Must push on. On the other hand, I always deserve coffee. Maybe even a cup of tea. Cup a cup of tea. I might go and see. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Let's go and have a look. How very English to have a cream tea in the wind. I was just looking at the route. If you can see. But I'm only about five miles in. I'm in I'm in between Little Oakley and Great Oakley. I'm trying to announce places where I am because of some constructive con constructive criticism from my mum, who said, I never do that. So, there you go. You happy now? Sorry, mum, I shouldn't provoke her. She's only five foot tall, but lethal. I know I'm gonna eat this and I'm gonna have to crack on. It's like quarter to two. So, uh, 
I haven't got all day and I've got 35 miles to go. It's been slow going because I'm kind of on footpaths for a lot of it, very quiet ones. And you have to push on those. It's the law and I always do. So yes, I'm gonna shut up and eat this. Cream first. So good. Right, so we're back off road onto a bridleway now. Uh, that was quite a bit of road riding, maybe three, four miles something like that which is actually good you get them knocked off quick and I was a little behind schedule if you can say I have a schedule I haven't really but still I'm guessing this bridal way now I take us across country back onto the coast I'm hoping so and our next big stop will be uh, Walton on the Nays I'll probably stop there and make a drink. Hard going into this headwind. So we've made it to Walton on the Nays. The wind is howling down here. I'm going to try and get on the pier, get to the end. I think this is supposed to be one of the longest piers in, in Britain. If I can get bikes on there find out. The pier is closed at the end. My God, it's so windy. I need to find somewhere and make a coffee. It's the problem with these pedals. I mean, they're grippy, but one pedal slip, just like you've been attacked by a leopard. I think I might go back to plastic ones. If anyone's got any advice, Still too busy to make a coffee. And I think the next stop is Frinton, which might be a little bit quieter than this. And I might stop and get a coffee. It's 25 to four. I'm so far behind schedule. Tomorrow's gonna to be a long day. Saying that I'll be up early. The sun sort of rises about half five and uh, I'll be awake. At least the sun's out, which is good. And in this little dip, it's lovely being out of the wind just for a minute. Yeah, so I think we're riding along the coast all the way to Clacton. And then we go a bit inland then towards, is it Bentley, Great Bentley? I'll double check when I get there. Which is where I think I'm gonna find the wood. It's 10 to four, so, Probably the time's about right. But this might be a good place to make a coffee. If I can find, I know I keep talking about it. I'm gonna shut up. Like my life revolves around coffee. Sadly it does. It's my only addiction. I gave up smoking when I was 40. Best thing I ever did had a complete new lease of life and I'm fitter now than I was when I was 30 which is quite a feat I would say
why make it when you can buy it? So I'm in Clacton. On the outskirts of Clacton, I think. Give it 10 years and I'll have one of them. Probably made of titanium and cost five times more than I need to spend. That's my choice. That's what I need. So yes, I'm gonna have this coffee, this banana and caramel muffin and these Pringles and then carry on. So I think I'm making good time now. It was good. Right, Let's see if I can show you where we are now. Here, in near Clacton-on-Sea. So we're gonna to go to Clacton-on-Sea and then we're gonna to go to Great Clacton and then rejoin up with somewhere where we've already been and then dart off towards Tendring Heath and Little Bentley. So that's what's next. So there's Clacton Pier. Got a big wheel on it. That's pretty cool. Dizzy being in here. It's so odd. So there we go. Upside down house experience. And that is Clacton. Right, now for a road ride to Great Clacton and then somewhere else. I need somewhere quiet now. So we made it safely out of Clacton. Now we're heading back inland, hopefully off the roads, or at least the main roads. And I suppose at some point I need to stop, figure out where I am and see how far before I think about camping for the night. Right, so we're there, at the end of my thumb, and we're at 32.5 miles. And I think I go through a perfect wood at about 42 miles, so another 10 miles, which will be about right, I suspect, because it's about 10 to six now, and I wouldn't want to stop too early. So I think that's going to work out well. I might have a, a little snack here now quick drink of water and then get the last 10 miles done that'll give me I think it's 77 35 miles to do tomorrow and I've got loads of time to do it I've been testing my um, dynamo hub and I was just wondering I've had it had my um, Wahoo element bolt my bike computer plugged into it and it's been running all day and I started the day at 52% and now it's at 89% so that's good to know yeah so I could indefinitely power that which means I can indefinitely have satellite navigation which means I can indefinitely not die in a desert in America that's indefinitely good. Right, I'm now gonna set this camera up over here and then go back that way and then film myself riding this way, just for you, just for my viewers. I hope you enjoyed that. 
If you did, then give me a like. I reckon I'm close to that wood. I should be anyway, I'm in Great Bentley now. It's only seven o'clock. It just looks like a good place to stop. There's a good couple of hours of uh, daylight. But then I could just enjoy that in a wood, couldn't I? We'll see. I think we're nearly there anyway. I'll bring you back when I am. This must all be uh, for turf, I reckon. Just flawless grass. For the temptation to just pitch. Set up camp right in the middle is almost overwhelming. This wood is stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. And amazingly, the sun has come out. So I think this is the spot for the night. I'm trying to be stealth camping lot. That's not going to help. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with this wood. There's signs on one side saying private property, but not on the other. So I'm guessing it's public land. I mean, obviously you're still not allowed to do it, but I don't agree with that. So I'm just going to be uh, respectful. I'm going to leave no trace. I'm not going to have a fire and no one will ever know I've been here. I'm not going to set up until it gets, it's getting dark, I suppose. I'm going to put the tarp up just because it's so windy. And then, yeah, I'll just uh, keep myself to myself here and hopefully have a quiet night on an early start in the morning because I've got more to do than I um, anticipated. But yeah, I have to stay here, it's so nice. So I'm going to get set up. Um, I've got a tiny tarp. I'm counting on it not raining. It's actually a poncho tarp. I think I'm going to have to demonstrate it to you. Awesome. There's not many people can pull off a, a tarp. They can't pull off the look. But I'm one of the few who can. Most people look ridiculous in them. But it's ideal for bike packing because you get plenty of airflow so you don't uh, sweat. Every single rain jacket I've ever used, um, I, get, I get wet. Um, I bought a really expensive Arc'teryx one, and that's exactly the same, Gore-Tex, so I don't know. I think these work better. So this is my tarp for the night. You unsnap the sides, and I'll show you. And then it's a tiny little tarp, which should be all I need. So I'm going to set up a ridge line probably do a little bit of a lean to. I think that's the way to go. I am the stupidest person known to man. I hate myself.
They are, that'll do. Sleeping pad, foam pad, quilt, pillow, but nice and simple tonight. The tarp there, Thermarest Uber lights pad, pillow, buff, you've seen that before, and my new quilt, which is a 20 degree quilt. So yeah, I know I'm probably gonna get crawling things on me, but I like crawling things on me. <laughs> it makes me feel more at one with nature, like a fern, like a fern in a wood. Can you guess what I was just looking at when I said that? So there we go. You might see a little hole where the hood goes, but you can um, fold that over somehow. I'm saying this like I'm any sort of authority on this. It's the first time I've ever used it. I, I think I've got it upside down, but we'll just forget about that because it's not going to rain if it does rain. No, it's not going to rain. I'm not doing this again. It took me four attempts. What a dope. Oh well, whatever. I'm going to get dinner ready. Beer. Deserved. Mm. Right, tonight we got posh pork and beans. Fire pot meal. I know I said I wasn't going to do them again when I did that South Downs video. I said I was going to make my own. I didn't get round to it. That much. Right, get that going. I'm gonna let this sit for 15 minutes. I don't know how posh it can be when it's an instant meal. I don't feel very posh. It's going to be an early start and I should sleep tonight. It was only about 42 miles, probably a little more when you add in all the messing about back and forth and I took a couple of diversions. And I can feel it. 42 miles off-road is entirely different to 42 miles on-road, as you'd expect. Mm. I forgot to say we did the draw today for the giveaway. I've already announced that I did a community post. I'll tell you who won though, in case you didn't see. Jalam Barnaby? Jalaum Barnaby. I'm sorry, I've I've murdered your name. I wonder where you're from. I've got an idea, Canada. I'm sure we'll find out. So yeah, congratulations. Um, that'll be the Trangia cook set, and uh, I'm just waiting for a message from Jalaum Jalaum to uh, tell me which one he wants and where he lives, and I'll get it sent. So, yeah, that was good. Well, we got quite a few entries actually. I was, uh, I was pleased. I guess the next competition will be a thousand. But I'm getting ahead of myself. You may all unsubscribe by then. Right, I'll come back in probably 12 minutes or so. So it's been 15 minutes and it's still not done. But I'm not going to sulk about it. I was just thinking, I had a, a comment a couple of weeks back from somebody. It was a nice comment, so they weren't moaning, but they said they wanted more bikepacking um, content. And I like the feedback. 
it's great to, to find out what people want to see on the channel. But I was also thinking, I'm doing everything wrong. To grow a channel, you need to be niche. I've looked into it, so you have to really pick something and go with it. And I've just decided I'm not going to do that. I can't do it. I'm doing random things under the umbrella term of being outdoors and cycling, canoeing, hiking. Um, I've got the Three Peaks Challenge coming up. There's going to be a ton of bikepacking stuff. The channel is going to be all bikepacking in uh, July and August. Of course, because I'm on the, the GDMBR, so a two-month trip. But, yeah, the, the temptation to, to try and grow the channel by focusing on one thing, and it probably would be bikepacking, is there. Um, not that I'm doing it just, you know, I'm not doing it. I'm not looking to make a, a living out of YouTube. I know that sounds ridiculous. But um, I'm doing it for fun. I suppose what I'm saying is I'm always going to have varied videos. I'm not going to be pigeonholed, really, or pigeonhole myself. Because I have seen other channels where they do that, and you can just see when they run out of ideas, and it starts to get a bit stale. And then you see them, and they're burnt out. And they need a break and I think it's just because you know if you're chasing chasing views by doing things you don't particularly want to do that can't be a good thing I'm super premature I've got 520 530 subscribers but I do love doing this this is another trip where I don't think I would have done it had I not needed to put a video out and I've, I've loved every second of it I know I've got to do the training but uh, you know I would have done something probably less I'd say complicated it's not that complicated particularly because Ross basically makes routes for me and uh, just sends them to me I don't have to do anything really And talking to the GDMBR, it's June the 2nd. I fly on June the 30th. I can't believe how quickly it's come around. I don't feel prepared, but I know that I am, if you know what I mean. I think just about everything is ready to go. Yeah, I still feel like I could have done more. I think that's a little bit of anxiety, which of course, you're going to get when you're doing something something big. It is a big trip. I don't know if I felt like this before I started the AT. I wish I'd logged in some way how I was feeling then. Another good reason for doing YouTube video. I suspect it was the same. I think you need a little bit of anxiety. I think it's healthy. You can't just jump into everything without overthinking it and over preparing well you can but you're just going to fail aren't you so I think that's what it is I could have done more training that's a fact but it's definitely not through um, laziness I've been busy I've been super busy I haven't stopped I've got so much stuff going on which is exactly how I like it so I guess I'll just really get um, trail fit on the way. I need to be averaging 50 miles a day. So I can start off a little bit low. And I bet you after two or three weeks, I'll be ramping the miles up. 50 miles will feel like nothing. Once I get my, do you get trail legs with um, cycling? That's what you call it when you're hiking. So yeah, I'm going this month 
unbelievable. With everything that's gone on over the last few years, it just feels surreal to be able to get out and do something like this. So I'm anxious, but I can't wait. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. The sun is just about set. This is such a gorgeous place. Absolutely gorgeous little wood. And it's quiet so far, apart from the wind. I'll show you the sunset. <coughs> camera doesn't do it justice just overexposes and now I'm gonna eat these posh pork and beans whether they're done or not because I'm just too hungry so I shall try them and tell you what they're like that is actually really good Credit where it's due. That is delicious. Happy with that? Right, I'm gonna eat this, finish this beer, probably make a hot chocolate, and then crash out. The light's gonna go in a minute. So I won't film anymore, because I'm gonna be hyper stealthy, not even use a headlamp. As soon as I've done all this, It'll probably be about quarter past half past nine and I'll go to bed. So I shall see you in the morning, bright and early, about half past five, get packed up and get moving. 37 miles to go tomorrow. So most of it was done today. Fantastic ride. I shall see you tomorrow. Good night. Pour over coffee. I think it's just about the best it gets. Good morning. It's 10 to 5. I've been awake for about an hour. It's amazing how early it gets light. But I was quite happy just lying. Lying here, listening to the birds and yeah, very pleasant morning so far. This is breakfast. It used to say something. I don't know what it was. I think it's muesli. We'll find out. I brought it with me about 58 times. I've never actually eaten it. might be oatmeal. I don't know whether to make it with hot water or 
oatmeal. I'm going to do it with hot water. And I'm going to throw in dehydrated fruit that we did at home. I think it's blueberries and strawberries and raspberries. It was all going to go off. So we dehydrated it all. I have to show that. I have to do a video on dehydrating. Dehydrating? Dehydrating stuff. Looks all right, actually. I think it was a British MRE, this one. So yeah, oatmeal. There we are. Let's see what it's like. I think you're probably supposed to add sugar. Go on. I'm sure it'll be nice now. Everything's nice with sugar. I need to get off sugar. magic all packed up ready to go leave no trace obviously i think the wind is starting to pick up so i'm going to try and get out of the wood and then i might get the drone up just show you where i was it's a nice spot and then get cracking 37 miles not bad at all Yeah, so that was a perfect camp spot. Absolutely perfect. I slept really well. And, uh, yeah, heard nothing all night. Be good. Hello, dog. Hello, dog. Hello, you. Good boys. This is a beautiful spot. There's an old mill here. Yes, I know. I know. We're good dogs. And I think this uh, footpath carries on up that way. I am seriously considering getting a kickstand. I wouldn't ordinarily, but uh, when you're doing these videos, I don't treat my bike very well. I don't know what they are. Olives? Must be olives. Or gr it's not going to be grapes, is it? Nice that the sun's coming out though. This is really nice. God, what a view. It's warmed up. Have a look to see where I am. Right, we're there. Where? I don't know, it doesn't say. We're actually not far from the coast. Hmm, come further than I thought. So the next stop will be Wivenhoe, and then we've got a bit of cross country from Colchester to Manning Tree, and then all along the coast back. Yes, it's going well. In a little diversion this church St. Peter's Church destroyed by fire in 1971 
Pretty cool. Well, not cool that it caught fire. It's tragic. An 11th century arch. Well, it's a good place for a stop. Let's have a quick drink and a snack, and then figure out how to get back onto the proper trail. So I don't want to go back, that was very steep coming down. Awesome though. Love this kind of stuff. So we're in Wivenhoe. Looks lovely. Just gonna follow the trail and uh, show you everything. Dried mango. Lovely. So that was Wivenhoe. Lovely place. Really nice. I did put the drone up and it didn't blow away. I should do a lot more with the drone. It can do a lot more and every time I'm out on a trip I think I just need to spend an hour, a couple of hours just learning how to use it. And then I don't and then I come out with it and I just nearly destroy it every time. Earlier on I couldn't get it to land and the battery was running out and I couldn't turn off the collision avoidance so I was trying to grab it out of the sky and it was trying to get away from me and I grabbed it and it was it's like the engine was revving and it was screaming. I just, I just, I really do. I'm gonna watch this and I'm gonna learn how to use it. It'll only take me an hour. Canadian geese. We've got quite a lot of Canadian subscribers. Right, so now I'm going to carry on. I don't know where I'm going next. Manning tree, I think. I think we're inland for a little bit, so I probably won't film a lot of that. And then, uh, yeah, we get to Manning tree, and then we've got another coast ride back to Harwich. Just caught it again. It's when I'm lifting and pushing through things. Seriously, man. Fuck these pedals. I need some different ones. I hate these. I'm gonna smelt them. University of Essex. I think we go through the whole campus. Sausage roll, cappuccino. I'll eat this and then go somewhere a bit quieter and then we'll see how far we got left. I don't think it's that far. 15, 20 miles? Mm. Windy again. Anywhere by the coast is windy. I can see Felix though in the distance. Doesn't look that far. Deceiving. Let's see how far I've got. There. So we're about 64 miles 
10 miles to go. What a spot. This is beautiful. It's hard going because it's a, a footpath. But yeah, really, really nice. <sighs> I'm feeling it now. Probably about seven miles to go. And I can tell. cool is that? Very, very strange little house called a house for Essex. So there you go, Rabness. If you want to see that crazy house, come to Rabness. I think the next stop really is Harwich. in the van, finished. Really good, I really enjoyed it. I'm not sure exactly how far it was. I'm guessing all told, probably about 80, 80 miles, something like that. That was a really good ride, I really enjoyed it. There was so much to see. Um, the link will be in the description below. It was very flat, but I had a, quite a, a strong headwind for a lot of it. It's a bit um, sobering when I think on the Great Divide I need to be averaging 50 miles a day and it's going to be a lot more difficult. The terrain will be more difficult and I'll be carrying more weight. I mean, in, in actual fact, thinking about it, I've been riding I probably did today in about six hours and yesterday seven so uh you know i wouldn't need I've, I've got more time than that when i'm on the great divide i've probably got a good 10 11 hours every day possibly even 12 depending what time i start so yeah there's hope and the truth is i'll build up my strength as i'm uh doing the route so i'll get uh, my trail legs throughout the journey and then I can make up any shortfall from the beginning towards the end on top of that I keep saying I have two months to do it I mean I won't come home until it's done so it I, I am gonna do it so uh, that's that's pretty much it if it takes longer it takes longer um, I've got a six month visa for the US so I suppose that's my limit but all in all, I would recommend doing this ride. I really, really enjoyed it. Harridge was uh, way nicer than I thought it would be. Everything was. It was. It was just really nice. So uh, yeah, if you do, if you do do it, then let me know. I'd uh, I'd be interested to hear how you get on as well. I'm gonna go home, get showered, have a beer, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. This is quite a busy one, I think. I don't know how Ross is gonna edit it. But thanks for watching. 
See you again.